Join us every week for coaching and Q&A. You'll learn how to get more listings signed and sold following the simple and fun easy listing method. Plus, find hidden gem tips and get motivated as you surround yourself with like-minded peers in this weekly mastermind. Let's jump in. Forever. Hey, Rob, what's going on? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Good, good. I'm, actually, I'm in the car in between appointments, but it popped up on my calendar. I was like, I'm going to log in. <laughs> it doesn't do a lot of good from your car, buddy. <laughs> Unless you have <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, so I did go. I had a listed appointment yesterday. Sold them on uh, on why we should do 0%. And uh, I'm going back again today. They've got a neighbor who might want to put an offer into the place. If the neighbor doesn't take it. We're going to list it this week. So I'll be leaning on you at the end of the week if I we get this listing. <laughs> So I sent you over that listing that we started on Thursday and uh, told you you guys should probably watch it, but we had a hundred people at the open house and uh, good turn it out. has never been easier to explain to real estate agents. They love it. The buyer's agents love it. The actual buyers themselves love it. Yeah, Everybody knows now about the NAR lawsuit. Yeah. And just it was positive feedback all the way around. What I've got That's to get you guys to do is do the processes and show you what I put on my listings, because it takes the it takes the anxiety away from everybody when you have explainer videos, you have how to documents, you know, in the MLS and also uh, on the Easy platform. Yeah. Because I, so, I know I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get tons of calls and tons and tons of agent comments, and so I gotta know what what to do up front is gonna be helpful. Yeah, well, we'll we'll go through that. Christine, how are you? I wonder. Probably still on mute. Well, let's. Uh, first thing we'll do. I don't know if Christine's gonna participate in the call or not, but we'll uh, show you some stuff. Sorry, it wouldn't let me unmute, but I'm here. Well, welcome. Where are you? Uh, where are you a real estate agent at? In Providence, Rhode Island, up to uh, Sherrod, Massachusetts. I'm licensed in both Massachusetts and Rhode and Rhode Island. Ah, so Trevor's in um, Rhode Island, Trevor. Um, so not anymore, but no. yes, in Vermont. But uh, Vermont. I, I, have, I have some guys in Rhode Island though, and I I, I lived down there and worked there for years. All right, so uh, Christine, have you gone through the formal training at all? Um, yes, I've been through all of the um, training sessions and um, all the materials. I just have, how, have not had how, a chance to jump on the uh, on the Zoom. Okay, so this is kind of a question and answer thing, but um, I haven't done a listing myself we've been focused on growing the easy real estate community so this is the first uh listing that i've done in probably two three years and what if you went through the formal training so do you have the manual the training manual yeah i don't have it in front of me but okay so if you read pages 20 something to 30 something whatever it is it talks about a story um, on how I got the, the listing appointment. It was a guy that I met at Starbucks. And uh -huh. then it goes through the listing presentation and then it goes through the paperwork and then it goes through the, what to do in an open house and then right through the closing. So it, it gives you all the tools. To this day, when I go on a listing appointment, I use that same material. So okay. this, this is a home that we did uh, a presentation two months ago, and it took them that long to get the um, house ready to sell. And it's, it's, it's just crazy. So the extra things that if you do, so you guys can see the, uh, the MLS detail sheet. Yep, we can. Christine, can you see it? Yes. <laughs> All right, so Trevor, I know that you always worry about the remarks, and this is what we have in the remarks. Um, and we were limited on on uh, characters, 
So it, it, it's, it's so annoying. In this day and age, why do we get to be limited on characters? It, it's stupid. just ridiculous. So if you know that you've got the home priced right with the seller, then we know that we're going to get a certain amount of people in the open house. And so mm -hmm. what I always do for my uh, offer events is I'll start them on a Thursday. In this case, I'm ending it tomorrow because today is Columbus Day. Right. So if you do and you follow the processes in the training and you, you, you get the home price right, that's virtually what you can do. Um, on And it'll be interesting to see we had at the open house at 100 people have seven people register on the site to make offers. And now it's just a matter of them getting their prequals and signing the uh, easy addendum. Uh, so what I want to do is go through, but if you look at the the information down here, yep. we've got uh, easy addendum uh, and there is an agent detail and second virtual tour or information call Robert or call Michelle at easy real estate offer. What I love about when people call Michelle and her team she gives the best customer service out of any, we still answer the phone. We still do things the old fashioned way. Every time somebody inquires about a property, we're back there calling them and making sure they understand how things work. So I wanted to show you guys this. So inside the supplements here. So here we've got the uh, easy addenda. So I happen to be using the new one. And you can see my wife here wanted to go with a 2.5% buyer's premium. Why? I don't know. I she, I don't know why she does this to me. But so it's 5, 2.5, two 2.5. And, two and, and the buyer's agents, not one of them had a uh, negotiated buyer broker agreement that was more than uh, three quarters of a percent. Uh, wow. So, so yeah. <laughs> and so the cool thing is, is that what I love about this, by both listing and selling brokerages agree, this addendum shall supersede, supersede any prior oral, written, or implied compensation agreements. So because the owner has lowered this down 10% below market value, the buyers are embracing it. Um my wife did the open house by herself. She had 111 people come through. She talked to buyers. She talked to buyers agents. And all of them knew about the NER settlement. And all of them are saying, hey, do you think that th this looks like a good way that should go on in perpetuity? You know, are, is this a platform you think that, that is going to take real estate over? And yeah, of course, my wife, well, it should, but... <laughs> you know, who, who knows? On her, but progress, that's yeah. the feedback she was getting from her buyers. And that's the feedback she was getting from the buyer's agents. There, there was no objections yesterday at all because people had all this information accessible and the remarks and believe it or not, they looked at it. People were come, actually working for three quarters of a percent. Yeah. Oh my God. Why bother? Uh, I'll tell you, where, where are you located? Oh, so you're located back east. We have in Seattle, one of the biggest Windermere's that's been there forever, is going uh -huh. out of business over this thing. Here's going out of business? The, a Windermere brokerage here is going out of business. Why are they going out of business? Agents. That, they can't, they only have two listing agents in the office. And what? so they can't sustain themselves and pay. She has, she's paying about $170,000 a month. And uh, between you know, her rent employees, leases and the right. stuff that she has. So she just getting out of it. She's had enough. But why so, is, I mean, is the, what's the typical split there? Cause here it's uh three and three or uh, as low as two and two. Windermere is all over the place here. I mean, I, you got your top agents making 90%, and then you got your new agents making 60-40. Mm -hmm. Some 50-50 at Windermere, same thing at Century 21. Mm -hmm. But, I, again, a lot of seasoned agents showed this home. And as many of them as I could get to to ask what their buyer-broker agreement, cooperation agreement was, 
it was bleak. Yeah, I, I don't know with their split and you know making eight thousand bucks. Honestly, and that's okay in Seattle, man. What if we were rural Tennessee or you know where the homes are three hundred thousand? Ohio, right? I, it's anyway. So the uh, so anyway so everybody was bouncing all over this and loved it. The uh, option number one here, if you guys went through it, that's just the old way we've been doing things with the uh, total being paid by a buyer's premium. Option number two is if traditional method where the seller agrees to pay the listing brokerage and the selling office brokerage, that would go in here. And then the third one is if the seller says, well, I'll pay the listing side, but I am not paying the buyer's side. And the way that we do business on that is because we're doing a buyer's premium and we can tack that on top of the price. Seller doesn't mm -hmm. have to come, buyer doesn't have to come out with any money out of its pocket. And also it allows the uh, buyer's agent to make more money because that's being built into the cost of the house. Right. So it can be it lended on, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, we don't say lending. We just, just like with uh, closing costs being, so I had, we had a, a contract that we wrote on August 17th and uh, the house was at 435. The lady had rented from us for, I don't know, 15 years. She's a school teacher and she needed help with closing costs. So we wrote the uh, offer for 440,000 and asked for that 5,000 back in uh, mm -hmm. closing costs. So the same thing is, the the commission is just being built into that cost of the house. If we ever say that we're, I had an interesting call from somebody. Well, if they're building the commission into the cost of the house, FHA and VA aren't going to lend on it. I said, no, 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 no. They're building it into the cost of the house. When you actually close the transaction after they've been events done. So let's just say in this case, seller chose $800,000 as the winning offer. Right. So they're going to take the 5% times and times 800, and that's going to be another 40,000. They're writing the purchase sale agreement at $840,000. Right. So now it's just a regular transaction. The seller, it's still coming out of the, the, the seller side of the HUD, but all that's explained inside of our addendum. Right. So if you have a, if the seller is paying the seller's agent and they're adding a 3% buyer premium, mm -hmm. the contract gets written for 820000 in that scenario, right? You got it. Exactly. And so it can be lended on as opposed to if you said this is commission and then yep. it couldn't be lended on. Correct. It's just, yeah. we got, it got a lot of you to say, no, nah, we're, we're financing commission. No, we're not financing commission. We're building it into the price of the house. Right. So, and, it, it, and yeah, by the way, once it becomes a regular real estate offer, the appraiser doesn't see it. The banks don't see it. Nobody sees it. Right. So okay. that's the addendum. So, and this, this is the addendum that we're using inside. So before they can submit a bid, they got to come down here and they got to have their buyers sign it. And then they have to uh, sign it. So that's the cool thing. Okay. So that that's done. And then the other thing that uh, is in there, um, oh, sorry. Oh, I got to stop sharing and then start again because I don't think I, oh, I did. That pressed. Okay. I'm sure that's somebody about the house. <laughs> I am looking for my virtual tours. So weird. I got to call the MLS and find out where that is. I don't what see. What are you looking for? Virtual tours. Uh, should be at the top. Wouldn't it be at the top? No. I think so. Oh, hold uh, it here. Maybe it's. Photos. Uh, usually it's after, like, yeah, one of those blue things. Yeah. This is really disappointing here. I know it's in there. Oh, well. I don't know. I'll call the MLS and find out where it went to. So, you know, I'll go ahead and we'll show it to you on this thing here. So there's a couple ways to put it in here. So this is our site. Then, so I've got a walkthrough video that's down here. You guys want to see a walkthrough video or Trevor, you've seen her do it, right? 
So I saw the one from last week. Yeah, it was good. Do you want to see it, Christine? Or yeah, not through? really. I do. I do walk through videos all the time. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so this is the one everybody ought to be using. It's inside the Canva. And in fact, if either one of you need help with editing it, by all means, send me the thing and I'll I'll do it for you. But this is an important part to, this is the agent explainer video. And for the people that watch it, you can tell because you don't get the, the goofy questions. <laughs> so let's uh, go ahead and go into it. Thank you for your interest in this easy real estate offer listing. We wanted to share a few quick notes and details about this listing and the easy bidding platform process. First, please be sure you've read the MLS sheet details and those agent remarks. This is an online bidding event. It's not an auction, but it is a 100% transparent opportunity for your buyer to be competitive in winning this home. Your buyer no longer has to lose to a highest and best scenario. They can see what it will take right now to win this property. Also, as shared in the listing, this property's list price is below market value, a starting price for the bidding event. All you have to do is fill out the easy and short term sheet, which will take you about 60 seconds. It's a highlight sheet of your buyer's offer terms, so you don't even have to complete or submit a fully drafted offer until your bid is accepted. In the MLS, you'll see that we're offering a full commission. How many times do you look at properties listed now where you're being offered much less? We value your representation for your buyer, so please pay attention to those agent remarks as well. Our goal is to create a win-win-win. Please also review the attached easy addendum that shares that the seller has the right to accept, reject, or counter a bid at any time, and it shares the buyer's premium detail. If you have any questions, please reach out to the listing agent here directly. And again, thank you for your interest in this easy listing and good luck. So all, you know, anything that we can put on there to just help the agents understand what it is, it just seems a soft and the blow. And with the new, with the new uh, rules and the new NAR stuff, I, there, there's going to be some snippets because my wife is like everybody else. She's always so nervous when a listing comes on because she's got to just wrap it around her head. And yeah, she, we haven't done one of these in a long time, but never have we gotten such positive feedback from everybody, from buyers, from sellers. Uh, had you know seven people register at the open house, which is excellent. I was a little disappointed we didn't get one offer yet on the site. Um, so that was interesting. But, um, you know, they, they've, there's another, I think, since the open house, there's like another four people that have registered. So hopefully we'll end up with 10 buyers making offers on the home. Nice. And, nice. and it comes back to it. So what happened? You know, the, the first question I always get from me, well, what if nobody makes an offer? Trevor, what if nobody makes an offer? What does that mean? We extend it out. The price is too high. There you go. Exactly. It, it, it's funny when people call me up and say, well, I haven't gotten any offers. And well, how many people are looking at the home? Well, I've had a couple. Okay. What's the feedback you got? Well, they haven't gotten any feedback. Well, when you did your open house, how many people showed up? I didn't do an open house. And it's so all these basic things that we should be doing as a real estate agent. And if we try to cut corners, it just makes it tougher. There's two ways when you're talking to a seller, either you're controlling the situation or the seller's controlling the situation. And if the seller is controlling the situation, and I'll give you an example of it. So we've got another listing that's been on the home for 60 days. Um, I went through the my presentation. I always do a traditional first and then come back to uh, the easy method. And so these kids wanted to, and I, I say kids are 35, 36 years old, uh, each of them. They wanted to put it on the platform, but they talked to their father, who I thought was a real estate because he's supposedly a real estate expert. And he says it's gimmicky and, you know, don't do that. Just run it traditional and even gave them the price. Well, what do you think's happened to that house? 
Yeah, still on the market. Yep. And then as kids called me up and say, hey, Robert, can we can we put it on the easy platform now? And it's like, no, you can't. Well, why not? I said, because we lower the price and then tell them they got to pay a commission. It's like a bait and switch. It doesn't work, you know, and it, and it it kills me because when I was talking to the kid, I wanted the kids to get the father on the phone and they wouldn't do it. And my wife that was with me in the presentation, like, kicked me, like, stop. But I knew that the kids should have put it on the site. You're either chasing the price down or you're chasing it up. And they've learned, uh, they want to get out of Seattle and their father has a special furniture store that they're going to open up in Reno and they want to get, they want to get out of here and, and get to Reno. And now they're stuck because they got to sell the home to move. So it's, I am so passionate about what this does for the public. And, you know, I guess I'm kind of thankful that I put one back on just, yeah, even for my wife, it was like it was refreshing. It was fun. Um, and it it just shows that we have the right thing going. People, I could go to Seattle and do this next week, and I could control listings. I could get every listing I wanted in Seattle. And but I believe in it, I'm passionate about it. Trevor was actually one of our the third guy that signed up to do this, and he's He's still wrapping his head around this stuff and said, we, 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 we got to get out there and get going. You know, we're willing to talk to sellers for you. We're willing to talk to buyers for you. We're willing, whatever you guys need to, to get the stuff going. Um, we're willing to do so. Any questions on that listing and the video? No. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody want to see the new website that's coming? Sure. sure. <laughs> We're testing it again today. So, anyways, I think you guys would agree that this is a much nicer look. And we haven't got this set up right, but this is going to be a big, huge map that they can look up agents. Well, he's kind of got it set up. So, let's see here. If we go, let's see where you guys are. See if you're in this. Did you guys fill out the form to get on this referral network? Yes. Maybe. No, I'm up there. It looks Vermont. There's me. Let's see here. Massachusetts. There you are, Christine Pasto. Yay. And the reason why is because we are going to start uh, a nationwide marketing campaign for listings. Excellent. So the other thing, too, is we got open house down here. The documents. The documents inside here where a real estate agent or a buyer has to download it, sign it, and put it back in, this will actually have DocuSign attached to it. Oh, great. Nice. So all the yeah. documents can be signed to it, the fees and commission, listing location and map, property feature. So a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. Yeah, and then down here, like we would have our walkthrough video, and then we would have the agent explainer over here. Yep. And there's just a ton of information for buyers and sellers. And I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So it's more of a, um, uh, a marketing site too. So they got case studies here that all, and then they can even fill out what's my property worth here. And then we'll get that to an agent in that location and they can start reaching out to them. How uh, how wide is the radius? So if somebody you know filled that out in Massachusetts, how far is the radius? Uh, it, it'll be as far as you want. When you we get the new one going, I think you guys will isolate it by city or zip codes. You okay. can tell us how far you want to go out. So we're also you know people using our site that want to be a buyer's agent. Everybody else, I don't know of anybody else that wants to be a buyer's agent. So we are going to be picking up buyers leads as well. And then come on here and get financed and not the whole deal. Um, so these are all videos that are going to be put in 
once we move the uh, <laughs> dynamic. Oh, look at that. I'll be darned. Nice. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that's getting closer to coming to fruition. Uh, we are doing hopefully the last test today. If the test goes fine today, then I'll get the branding, the colors. Um, and then we'll put the rest of the videos on and this thing will be up and going next week. Great. So what questions do you guys have for me? Uh, in the public description, are agents putting anything in the public description about the, about anything? Not the agent remarks like the, in the MLS, but the public out front. Do you have a uh, <clears throat> limit on your characters, Trevor? Uh, I think it's like 1,500. It's plenty. 1,500? 1,500 for the, so, the, those remarks right there. To answer your question, no. We don't put it on the public remarks. You put something down about it, they're not going to understand what it is. Best thing to do is have them come in and see you. Mona picked up, she could have picked up like 11 buyer's leads, but she didn't want them. And uh, so she just basically gave them, we had another couple agents that were there. So she just turned them over to them. She also picked up two listing appointments, but on the public side of it, you don't want to start putting things in that they don't understand. Right. Like, you know, I just remember seeing once a while ago, someone had in the public description, uh, uh, final sale subject to a 6% buyer premium. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I prefer to to talk to my people and explain to them and why it, it's happening. I, you know, I I don't know who did that, but that's that's not anywhere in our training stuff. So somebody did that on their own. Yeah, I never saw it before. It might have been a listing Joe had that I didn't see any more of him since he since that one listing I saw with him. People don't understand what a buyer's premium is. No, they don't. So. Just it's much better because they'll call you on the property if it's priced right. And the other thing is too, you know, when they come into an open house that has a hundred people in there, what do you think there's reactions going to be about the the processes? I'll do whatever it takes. I want it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's why it's so important to control the conversation. When we did this, just just you know, I, I told this to Trevor the other day, but when we did the listing presentation. Uh, a month, six weeks ago, the seller really started getting into this. And he pulled out when we got into the pricing, what it should be. And he pulled out four sheets of paper, one for his son, one for him, one for Mona, and one for myself. And he said, everybody write their number down that they think it'll take to get the hundred buyers in there. And uh, so, and, and that's the kind of thing that you want. Most people that struggle with doing listing presentations, Christine, it's because they're making too much out of this. This is a tool in your tool belt. Right. It's not, like I say, we come back here, I have two. One of them's on the platform, one of them's not on the platform. Look at that. Now they're chasing the price down. Yeah. Already loaded a hundred thousand dollars, and in reality, they're gonna probably have to load another hundred thousand dollars to get somebody to even look at it. And it, it, it yeah, they, they made a bad decision. A lot of times, I won't even take a listing if I'm not putting it on the platform. My wife, on the other hand, will. But in this market, in this economy, we got to be chasing the price up, not down with the interest rates and everything else that we have against us out of here. So, and like I say, they, 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 they called me back. Uh, well, the husband called me and say, you know, is it, can we put it on the platform now? We, we made a mistake. We should have put it out there. <laughs> it's like, no, you can't. I mean, I, we can take it off the MLS and let it set reset, you know, over the next six months and then re well, we, we got to move before that. 
Well, now we're chasing the price down. All the things that we tried to get them not to do. And now we're having to play the game with them. So, so Trevor, that answer your question? It did. It did. Which is why we'll do less, less confusion. Yeah. Yeah. T talk to the people. And, you know, some people even, you, you guys heard in a video that we have a sheet that you can, like, when they submit a bid, they can put down if they're looking for any concessions. I don't ever use that sheet i call when somebody makes a bid i call and talk to the the agent right and why do i do that because i want to make friends with them and i want to ease into the the situation and better yet i want them to come use the site and trevor you with exp you want to talk to the agent so you bring them on board hey come on my team you can use this thing too yeah that's a good tool for that actually well that's the best tool for it so, Christine, do you have any questions? Nope, looks good. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about today? I'm pretty good. <laughs> in my car. Are you in your car too, Christine? No, no, I'm home. Okay. The, um, the people that are having a lot of success are using the old fashioned method uh, expires for sale by owners, but they are also farming a, a territory. So Quinn Greeley, who I think he's double-sided his first three deals. Um, Alton double-sided his first deal and not his next two, but they're all of a sudden figuring out if they just keep putting information in front of people that there's people that are saving their cars and then giving them to other people. So if that matter, if you guys want to do that to get some incremental business, we are going to be getting uh, listing appointments for you guys, all of you, as soon as this new website's launched, um, it will become a marketing tool and we've got, uh, we're going to put a certain amount of money and try to start dominating the seller's market. The listing market. I mean, we ought to be able to do that with the zero percent platform, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we that that's coming to fruition as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else is coming up. We're going to have a contest coming up. We're going to do a uh, 90 day listing challenge, and we'll have some nice prizes. We are planning on next uh, May to have a training event in Nashville, Tennessee, that you know people can come and just let their hair down, get to know each other and have some fun. So um, that's coming up, be watching for that. And um, I don't know what else to say. New content's being put into the, Christine, you, you understand the training portal? Yeah, I'm, uh... I guess I'm missing some of the some of the documents in the trade. I was just looking at my folder and it doesn't seem like I have all the documents I thought I had. Um I mean, are, are they all in the Facebook group? No, they're I'll, I'll, I'll go through and show you. If you don't have the I don't know, most people don't like the new addendum because they're too smart for themselves. I happen <laughs> to love it. Um, and I use it, obviously, you guys saw that in my, um, the other thing, let me see if you have, let's go back to the listing again. Go back into the supplements. Do you have the uh, how to? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I have the, the, I guess I have the tools I need to put a listing on what I'm looking what I'm not seeing in my folder is the marketing tools like the listing presentation and the and those kind of things. Are those in the Facebook group? No, they're in the uh we're, we're going to that right now. So and this is I hate doing this, Christine, because it's all changing. So when we first built this site in 2015, I was told by my techie person, keep the easy real estate offer for the consumers. Mm -hmm. And so that way they go to that site 
the easy to get certified site, use that for the agents. So we've always had two URLs. Two th when we do the easy real estate platform, when we open that, all of this stuff in here is going to, it's going to be a one site and that easy to get certified goes away. Easy real estate offer goes away. Okay. So, but in the meantime, if you go into here and then, um, how are you with social media marketing? Great. When you have a listing, what kind of advertising are you doing? My company has a deal with HomeSpot or Boost, so I always do that. My company also, in addition to the professional photography, they create a um, standalone URL for that particular property, and we create a video. So I pretty much post it on YouTube, TikTok. Um, I do teasers on Instagram and Facebook, and then I'll do kind of updates before I put it on, you know, a couple of days before I do the open houses, um, reminding awesome. people. It's coming. Cool. And if, any kind of idea what kind of reach you're getting out of uh, your ads? How many people? The, the, the boost ads, um, you, I usually see, you know, it usually gets tens of thousands of, um, of impressions, but then, you know, you get several hundred people that see the ad. And then I actually get, for everybody who clicks to unlock photos, I get their name and email. Yeah. So I usually end up with, a, you know, anywhere from seven to 25 of those. Okay. So <clears throat> you, you've already got your stuff together that maybe this is more for Trevor. I paid $25,000 to become a social media master. And the guy that I paid the money to ended up putting his course on our site. So for $300, this is, this is one of the very first ads I ever ran. But ultimately, 111,240 playthroughs. The video for this home was five and a half minutes. Hmm. And then you can see the reach ads and you can see the impressions and, you know, total 132,000. For the this home here, because we retarget and keep going, um, I've got close to a million views on it for 300 bucks. So if you ever decide you want to do it yourself, there's a, a course inside here. We go to the easy platform. And are you a Canva wizard too? No, I don't use Canva. Oh, you don't? Okay. Well, if you want to learn how to use it, because a lot of our marketing materials are in Canva, this is a, a course for you. They'll make you an expert at it. And then let's see. All right. So have you been inside of here? Um, yeah. Past okay. training videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another play. This is what I use for um, um, doing a uh, presentation. I'm actually just opening this up and showing the people how to run a perfect bidding event. Um, this one here, I think, is what happens if I didn't get any uh, bids. Or right, now we're calling everything offers. This uh, girl here was she was a part of the platform, but she couldn't overcome objections so i said all right i'll tell you what I, I said i want you you know i'll be the listing she goes i don't want you to be the listing agent i want somebody else so <laughs> joe happened to volunteer to do it so she threw everything in the kitchen farm at him and he overcame all the objections the new day now the, the cool thing is is uh at our open house not one objection not everybody was like digging it absolutely amazing so this next marketing corner trevor if you want to learn how to do it there it is it's twenty five thousand dollars worth of information for you and if anybody needs help running facebook ads i'll, I'll help as well but we'll go into the um seller material so email marketing samples yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. And you see you got all the subjects over here. Yeah, where did you where did you get that tab? So um, that is in, I'll go back into it and show you. So I am in the easy seller material. Okay. And then you got a prospecting pack here. 
And okay. these are great. Um, but where I got that is right here, email marketing samples. Okay. And then there's a case study. Let's go and look at that. So if you edit template, it's going to take you into Canva though. And then you can edit it and put your information on it. But your your phone number and website, I mean, all this stuff is great to take out too. Yeah, it's pretty easy to use too. It's yeah. Okay. I was gonna just go scroll down and show you some. We actually have a. I'm trying to let's find that. Where is it? Thing. Here we go. So this is one of the uh, one of the presentations that you can come in and download. And again, you just got to put your stuff down there but it's got case studies mm -hmm. yeah this is how easy it is these are the the steps that we do and then it's got uh some actual transactions that are done here so you can see here commission saved twenty seven thousand. selected offer 451.5 by time they purchase prices 478.590 when they added six percent on top then we got one from donnie same thing. I showed that listing. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Is that how you found out about us? No. <laughs> no. Oh. How'd you find out about us? I don't know. But I remember when I saw that picture, because it's an odd looking house. Um I remember I showed that listing earlier this year. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? What is this easy real estate offers, submitting offers thing? But like my clients weren't interested anyway. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Here's Quinn Greeley's. He double sided this thing. Alton Smith double sided his. This one. There's good old Joe. Joe double sides three quarters of what he puts on here. But this one here almost got $3,000 over. Yeah. Look at that. Pretty impressive. And then top questions and uh, what are you waiting for? So. So that's available for you to use too. And you just put your information on it and if you like it. But we have mm -hmm. probably 10 listing presentations in there. Um, okay. Again, I just, if you read the book that I I just, I, I tell the story. And my objection uh, is to help you guys create your own stories. So all that stuff is in there. So, and, and Christy, do you have my phone number? Um, I don't know. Why don't you give it to me in case I don't? I'm going to put it in the chat here. So I'm the one who made this thing 15 years ago. Mm. And I think Joe's finally beating me now because I stopped using it for the last two, three years, trying to build up the easy site and help agents. Um, Joe's the only one who's done uh, more transactions than me now. But I've done close to 100 transactions on this in Seattle and Ohio. I've come across every objection. I am just telling you, this has never been easier for the industry. I bet. Everybody's yeah, that, getting it now. Yeah, That Every open house was spectacular. It was just exciting and refreshing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a good time, Trevor, to get your butt into the game. We're being afraid of it. Yeah. And, and by the way, Christine, so we, I don't know when you joined, but in October, I we stopped selling any of the, the court or anything. We had all these people signing up and nobody was using it. And I called them, just like I called Trevor. So I did a state of the union and called like 50 agents. Trevor was one of my first phone calls. And he, like, see, he was a third. We know Trevor from before we ever started this thing. Mm -hmm. He used to have a company called Shout Boss that we used. And we called him up and said, hey, you know, what, what's what's going on? Why aren't you using the site? What's what's the problem? And out of 50 agents, I got the same damn story from every one of them. Ah, you know, Robert, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the only one in the state. I don't really know how to explain it. I, you know, I, I, I'm afraid of it. I, I, I don't know what to do. 
And I don't know how to talk to, to people about it. I tried putting one on and then my seller had a camera going and, and so I said, well, yeah. And I, Trevor, it's exactly why I'm calling. And I said, well, did you go onto the training portal and look at the training stuff? And the same comment, you guys have a training portal, <laughs> right, Trevor? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and then I am sitting there like going, I, my head's about ready to explode. Uh, so we stopped selling the courses and we've come out with a new plan. The objection here, the objective here is to get everybody using the site. Have fun with this thing. It's not rocket science. Go out there and be proud that you, when you see the the buyers, the sellers, and everybody getting so darn excited about everything, it's and then you, you go through the event that even the buyers the, we recruited buyers agent that didn't even win, but you know what they loved about the platform, the transparency, right. Their yeah. buyer told them when to stop. Their buyer didn't go through this highest and best garbage and say, well, yeah, I'm going to go find a real estate agent that can get me the deal. Yeah, I always hated those um, highest and best no uh, no uh, escalation clauses. I'm like, how screw you. How can you tell me no escalation clauses? Right. <laughs> like... Well, uh, now, so I'm a managing broker at Century 21, right? We got sued <laughs> over an escalation clause from one of our agents because he couldn't back it up. He told Ooh. somebody he had a bunch of offers on and took their highest when he had no other offers. Well, cost... that's unethical. That's just unethical. Exactly. But that's, so at that point in the office, we did no more escalation clauses. So anyways, but yeah, it's, it's, you got scammers and you got real people, but man, go on and have some fun with this thing. If you can't get a listing appointment offering a 0% commission to that, the seller, then we should be in another business. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, all right, you guys, I'm going to. Thank you. But yeah, thanks for coming I, on. Trevor. I got your number now. So <laughs> feel free to call me anytime. If I don't all answer, right. I promise I'll call you back. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.